Welcome back to Worship Leader Wednesday, a series here at Worship Tutorials where we help you become a better worship leader in this video, in, the next, in the next five or ten minutes or so. And That's today right. we're talking about multiple vocalists, empowering vocalists, multiple vocalists to lead songs at your church. So before we get started, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you the question, how many people lead songs? Are you the worship leader? And if so, do you lead every song? Because we don't. We're going to talk about that today. All right, so I'm going to start this off by asking Pastor Fuller here a question. Mm -hmm. At our campus at Durham, which is our largest campus at our church, how many people, I mean, different people lead a song in a month? Oh, in a month? Yeah. How many, uh, how many different people? Quick math would be <laughs> 12 to 15, depending on... Well, it depends if you call different. You, you, you have three yeah. different people every Sunday is the goal. Right. Three so, different people every a to Sunday. lead, and what, when we say lead a song, we mean like they're the lead vocal, they're the melody, they're out front. Yeah, they're the basically they're leading the people. They're the worship leader at that point. Yeah, right. And how many of them are staff? Uh, usually, usually one, whoever the right. staff worship leader is. Um, and but the goal is like you know is to use volunteers. Yeah, and that's so, the goal. So basically, what you've yeah. done is you've empowered ten plus. Yeah, we have. I think on our team that total, lead, that lead song. On our team total, yeah, we have probably about eight to ten killer lead vocalists that can mm -hmm. get in there and really, really do a song justice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I think most most churches probably. I don't know yeah. for sure. Let us know in the comments. But I would sure. imagine most churches have one person that leads almost everything. I've seen that a lot. And then maybe. Yeah. Maybe if that person is a male, they might have a female vocalist. Yeah, that would be the second that, like, so comes in and, yeah. every once in a while. Yes. But we feel it's really important that you have multiple people mm -hmm. every weekend yeah. leading songs. And I think you can do this in a small church. We're now we know that we're in a larger church, right? So this 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 campus that we're talking about where we have Three different people a weekend, and it's ten, ten vocalists. I mean, that's a church yeah. of a couple thousand people. And we don't always have three. Mm -hmm. There are some weekends where, because of schedule, the availability and stuff, we have two. Like this weekend, it's two. It's, you it's and me. two, yeah. <laughs> On weekends where it's just one, yeah. it feels like a major fail. It does. Every time. Yeah. Because I've had, maybe in the last eight years, two weekends. Uh-huh. Maybe three weekends. I can count on one hand yeah. how many weekends that I've had to sing everything or the worship leader had to whoever sing everything. Was, whoever was scheduled. And it's everything. not. Yeah. It's not ideal. Like L.A. It example. feels it feels weird to us mm -hmm. because it's not part of our culture. So let's talk about why it's important mm -hmm. and how you do it. Sure. Well, obviously, um, you know, you step on toes because I'm the worship leader. I blah, 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 blah. You know, and, yeah. then, and then you've got the whole thing of, well, we can't recruit. I'm getting all the excuses out now. Okay. Uh, and then, all the excuses. Yeah. It's like, oh, well. Well, we we don't have people. Okay, yeah. that's an excuse. Um, you know, well, you know, our people aren't at the level they need to be. Yes. Oh, there's there's a there's a billion different excuses. The other excuse that no one really says, but it's more work. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is more work. Yeah. To w at the beginning, it's, also, it's more. It's also scarier. Yeah. It's oh yeah. It? There's control. 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 Mm. You got to give up control. Yeah. All those things are uncomfortable, and then you've got that hidden <clears throat> uh, pride thing. Yeah. That says most a lot well, of times I'm worship the, leaders want to be yeah the, the center of attention leading, and be the one yeah and then when you start empowering other people <clears throat> you, it, it starts going it starts taking the attention off you mm -hmm. and like suddenly you know you're spreading the wealth if you will mm -hmm. so it takes a lot of um, mental mind shift to get to the place where your vision and your goal is to do that yeah um, but let me tell you like for us I mean there have been seasons where we've had four services mm -hmm. on a Sunday so if you go yeah. rehearsal currently we do two. Currently we did two. You do rehearsal and four services plus a run through that morning. If you're singing four songs, oh gosh, you can't talk Monday. Yeah, you're lucky if you can make it through the set. Especially if one of those songs is, is it Israel song is high. <laughs> is it like it pushes yeah. you in any way? Yeah, you can't. You don't have to look at it like I need eight people. Yeah, but but if you find one person that can sing with you, you just cut your load in half. Yeah, yeah. So, so the fatigue is one thing. Uh, yeah. Another thing about it is is diversity. I'd say racial diversity. Age diversity, gender diversity, yeah. but even beyond that is just sonic diversity. Yes, yeah. like pe you, diff people in your congregation connect yeah. with different kinds of leaders. Like and no matter how leaders. great of a vocalist you uh -huh. are, after hearing you all day, 
It gets <laughs> old. People, some people are tired of you singing. Yeah. Telling I you, mean, even if you're great, let's be honest. Of you. Most people are. <laughs> You ever go to a concert and you're like, this is my favorite band, and after like an hour you're like, all right, I'm ready to go home. Yeah. You know, it's like, it, it's just fatigue. It just, yeah. it wears on you. Plus, there's so many different styles of music. Yeah. You can't sing all of them. Right. You're not so, going to be the best vocalist for every song. Yeah, so, d yeah, diversity yeah. as far as like multiple people. But that brings up another point. Some people out there are better than you. And what? And yes, it's true. How how dare you? Or if you can't stomach that one. <laughs> <laughs> some people are better at certain styles than you. Absolutely. And if, and if you if you're if you want in your church to to sort of diversify the mm -hmm. style of music that you play. Yeah. Which I think a lot of churches want to do. Uh, you know, let, let's just be blunt. I'm like if I am I am a, a 40 year old white male grew up in Oklahoma and if we want to do like echo <laughs> you're or, not the guy and that's like that's not even I mean that's kind of like the the crossover yeah that's know? like yeah <laughs> like if you want to go full like gospel in Jesus know, name stuff, yeah. and, and Israel, Israel. Yeah. any kind of Israel, Israel yeah. like I'm not the guy to sing it and yeah. and luckily we have people who are awesome at yes. pulling that off yeah. Um, and so if you want to do that in your church, you need people who are able to like really step into that style. Yeah. Especially if, if it's out of your comfort zone, it's okay. You can empower somebody else and mm -hmm. let them shine. Yep. Yeah. There's a concept that, that John Maxwell talks about called a leadership lid. Yes. Right. And it's like the, the level of leadership can hit sort of a stopping point. Yes. Uh, depending on the leader. And if you're a leader that has not empowered other people mm -hmm. on your platform to yeah. step up and lead, you're really kind of, you now are the, are the lid. Are the lid. You're the lid. Yeah. Right? And so as you recruit and find and encourage and empower other people mm -hmm. to step in and lead that have other strengths, that can bring other things to the table, you've now removed that lid. Yes. And your level of leadership has gone up. Yeah. And while it might feel like you're stepping, you're you're stepping out of a, of a leadership role because you're not singing. Really, what your your leadership has grown to a point where now you are empowering other people yeah. to step into that, and that's a really important thing, and that's a difficult thing to do. It's sort of a yeah. stepping into a new level of leadership. Mm -hmm. So how do you? Let's transition now to yeah. that's why it's important, and there are other oh, reasons yeah. why it's important. Yeah. But those are some big ones. How do you actually do this if you don't currently have sure. multiple people, you know, leading yeah. songs at your church? Yeah. Well, the cool thing is vocalists are always easier to find than musicians. It's true. Um, I bet you if you just what's looked... The, what's the Dwight, <laughs> Dwight Schrute? It's true. It's true. <laughs> yes. If you look out at your congregation, most likely there's some people there that are vocalists. Yeah. Right? And, and I mean, of course, you got to vet them and you got to be careful with the quality bar, mm -hmm. but... This is the easiest thing to do comparatively when you talk about yeah. finding drummers. or It's easier to find yeah, good have, vocalists. You'll have 10 vocalists in your church to every one drummer. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. And so you've just got to um, you gotta identify them, mm -hmm. and then you've got to come up with... First of all, you got to give them permission. Mm -hmm. And so if you are singing every song... If you've been singing every song every weekend at your church yeah. for five years, mm -hmm. everyone who's in your congregation thinks that... There's no opportunity for yes. for them. So if I'm a vocalist and I'm in the congregation, I'm always thinking there's no opportunity for me. Right. Why? Because I've never seen anyone else. Yeah. And so you have to create opportunities for them. So at the beginning, it might be harder because you're going to have to isolate the vocalist and you're going to have to come to them and say, hey, I need more vocalists because mm -hmm. the way we're doing things now is not how we want to. Yeah. It's just we're doing it because it's all we can do. Mm -hmm. And so, and then the moment you take another person and put them on stage and they lead a song and the congregation sees that consistently, yeah. then everyone else is going, oh, you, maybe you, there's a place. I started, sing. You started to change yeah. culture a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And that happens with diversity. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you don't have any female vocalists on your team, the first time you put a female vocalist up there, all of the other female vocalists are going to go, oh, this is a place that I can be a part yeah. of. Mm -hmm. With the Af If you have an African-American vocalist, if you're a majority white church and you have an African-American vocalist, the other African-American vocalists in your congregation are now going, oh, there's a place for me here. Yeah. And that's how you build... That's how you build yeah. diversity. That's how you build. You have to show everyone that, hey, we have a spot for you. Yeah. And if you're, again, I hate going back to this, if you're using the same musicians every week, 
We've and, never and said this before. I feel like this is all about to come full circle. <laughs> this is because everyone this argues are 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 the thing. That it is. Gonna, it's, it's like I think worship right tutorials exists to, to, to give your volunteers to, a break. Seriously, <laughs> and so if you use the same musicians every week, if there is a guy in the congregation that plays drums, he's thinking. There's no place for me here. Right, because so drum, he's not even going to tell you he plays drum, drums. The drummer position is full. It's filled. It's Billy's. Yeah. You know, and again, this is all why it's so important to have team rotations. Yeah. Because the moment you crack that shell, the floodgates open, right. and that guitar player in your audit, your congregation's going, "Oh, I, I could be on this team." Yeah. Because they have three other guitar players. Yeah. And this guy's a little bit more like me, and the other guy, you know. Right. And so I'm telling you, do yourself a favor and just. Break through that leadership lid. Yeah. You, you have to. Another thing that you're probably going to need to do as the leader, as you empower people, is um, is, is some coaching. Because okay. I've, I've found in my experience that you might have people on your team who are really gifted vocalists, and they can lead a song, but they don't know how to lead worship. Yes. And there's two different things. Th- those are, are two different things. things there, yeah. Right, and so when it comes to leading work, you might need to coach people, but this is a great opportunity yeah. for you to mentor, and for you to take somebody. And uh, now, it, it, probably a caveat here that we should say is it, it. A lot of times, what you might have is a situation with a male worship leader and a female vocalist, right? And so, those in that situation, you need to be careful yes. as far as like, yeah. How are you meeting together? How does that always three. sort of coaching? Always three. Just right? always three people. The, the, yeah. the two of you alone in a room like talking about this might not be a good idea. Yeah, maybe that's the two of you to, and the sound guy. That's not or, something, yeah, to, think, yeah, that's something yeah. to think about. I yeah, just for sure. That Boundaries are important. Yeah, yeah but um, it's an opportunity for you as a leader to... Mm-hmm. Em- I mean, this is where this is when we say the word empower. This is part of what we're talking about. Yeah. So you need to coach people on stage presence. You need to coach people on energy. Right, you need to coach people on, on how much joy is yeah. on their face yeah. and in their body language yeah. as they lead. Coach people on how to sort of exhort the congregation and lead the congregation because leading a song in worship is different than performing a song like for special music or yes. something. Right, so you, you need to coach people how to lead worship because that's what really you're asking somebody to do. Yeah, and uh, in my experience, people will be very nervous. But it's also very exciting for them. Yeah. And it gives them an opportunity to do something that I guarantee you they've dreamt about doing before. Like, yeah. this is a thing that, that people they're, have, like... They're probably waiting for you to I ask them. I would love to, to yeah. have an opportunity to do this. Yeah. Right? And so it's a really cool opportunity for you as a worship leader to to mentor people, honestly. Mm-hmm. And that's hard to do. And, and there's some growing pains in there. Yeah. And you have to be okay with when you give somebody else the lead for the first time... You have to be okay with the level of quality or excellence maybe going down a little bit from, from your standard. And you have to be okay with it going up. Yes. Because that's, that's, sometimes that, be that happens like, and it catches you off guard. Like You bring that one person in and they slay it. Like, and all you hear is, when are they going to sing again? Yes. And, you're th- and you start hearing yeah. this lie okay, like, now that's the, uh, that's they're the better insecurity that thing, yeah. and it, it will happen. Yes. And then the opposite will happen. If you put someone up there that's not ready, people are like, please don't ever do that again. Yeah. And then you're like, then but, you start questioning whether it was the right thing. But you just so, have to rely yeah. on your, I mean, you have to, you know, yeah. if, if you go down this road, you got to go, you got to go. You got to like, go. You got to go all in. And take your time, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and, and, and just look at every small thing as a victory Yeah. closer to where you want to be. Do it with musicians as well. Right. Yeah. But I do say this, there's, there's a shortcut. One of the things that I did, uh, you know, when I started building the ministry that I'm currently at is I had to seed it mm-hmm. because you look out and you go, okay, we're, we're, far, we're further away than from where we want to be yeah. than we can get right now. Yeah. And so one of the shortcuts I did was I strategically found some local professionals mm. And I'd just be like, hey, I will pay you $200 to mm. come sing with me this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you do that once or twice yeah. or three times or four times a year. And then suddenly you're, you're showing the congregation that, hey, this, we're, we're going in a different direction. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to sustain that forever. Like, you know, we're fully volunteer led. But there are some times, like, you know, if, if, 
if you know if there's like a, you know a lot of churches might do this like with a orchestra or mm. or on Easter suddenly on Easter and this is happens this is like the ultimate church bait and switch yeah. you go to a church on Easter they have a choir an orchestra <laughs> camels that. and all this stuff and people are like this church is amazing Live and animals. then they come back a week later and it's like three guys on an acoustic guitar well that's another worship leader Wednesday <laughs> yeah Pay attention to the Sunday after Easter. <laughs> yeah, right. or because, Christmas. Yeah, yeah, because the bait and switch thing is real. And <laughs> yes, it is. People will get whiplash. From that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I hope this has given you a few things to think about as a worship leader when it comes to who is leading songs on your platform. Again, let us know in the comments if you have any questions about this. How many people lead songs? If you're already doing this, then we want to encourage you. you. That's that's great. If you're not doing it, it's just something to think about. Uh, putting into place. It's not something that, that it's, you, you can change like next week. This is a process that takes some time. And uh, you need to set up systems in place as far as we talked about vetting people. Onboarding. Or like sort of yeah, auditioning. Stuff, like you yeah. got to know somebody, you need to know if somebody has yeah. has the, the goods yeah. to pull this off or not. And one other thing too, <clears throat> when you do this, yeah, make sure you steer the congregation while it's happening mm. so that it's just not out of nowhere here's this new person leading a song yeah. like introduce them yeah and say hey we're them. so glad you're here this weekend i want to introduce my friend yeah jenny she's gonna be uh she's leading worship with us this weekend she's a killer vocalist everybody say hi to her you know and then let mm. her say something so it's like don't just like out of nowhere all of a sudden your hill song with yeah. eight worship leaders yeah, <laughs> and right. the church is like who are these people <laughs> yeah. i've made that mistake yeah so, and it's, and it's yeah. okay, like, it's okay to talk to your congregation, too, please, please. and give people a, an opportunity yeah. to speak a little bit. I yeah. think a lot of times that doesn't happen a lot, yeah. but feel free to do that as well. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.